Thursday. Welcome to another Thursday morning and yet another episode of Seeds of Music. I'm your host, Kyle Williams, and this is the number one web show and podcast where aspiring independent artists and do-it-yourself musicians can learn right now how to gain wider exposure, grow an awesome, strong base of raving fans, and make a living doing what we love, which is creating music every day. Now, on the show today, I have Bob Baker, and Bob is an author, musician, and workshop leader who is all about helping creative people of all kinds get exposure, connect with their fans, and increase their income incomes through their artistic passions. And this guy is doing a lot. I mean, a lot. He's like writing books. He's he's writing stuff online, like articles, and, and running uh, different uh, several different websites for for different things for authoring and, and, and for do-it-yourself musician careers and whatnot. But he runs a, a his own internet show called Buzz Factor. All right, which is all about music marketing tips for do-it-yourself artists, which is what we're also all about here at the Seeds of Music community. And it's all low-cost self-promotion ideas for any musicians, songwriters, and bands. And so I I just com- was compelled to bring Bob onto the show. He's, he's the man to be talking to about these do-it-yourself artist music marketing tips. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about seven mistakes musicians make when promoting online. Let's go. All right, Bob, thanks for coming on to Seeds of Music. I have to say, man, you have you have trumped me in video and background quality. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Actually, you, uh, we, you, we're using the same microphone. It's the snow. Uh, what is it called? The snowball. Yeah, the from... snowball. It, yeah, it's, it, you, you've got like uh, in, interesting. You got like two. Was that like two stands going into it? Like it's well, I just, I just, I just. It just have a boom stand that I've got coming over from the uh, side, and so yeah, because it, it used to come up straight from, but I, you know, I had to kind of <laughs> sit gingerly here in my chair with a straight stand. But I, so I've been using this, and actually, you mentioned the background is actually I'm in my home office in St. Louis, and those are actually original paintings that I've done. I actually do some visual art, oh, wow. and so yeah, I do a lot of celebrity portraits, kind of in a pop art style, and uh, so I make I figure what what why not make them part of the background, you know? Oh, nice man, a man of very talents. It's pretty cool to meet some. I mean, I'm I'm not that as as skilled with painting. I never uh, did painting in college. I made a lot of drawings at the still life, but I I couldn't I couldn't sit down and draw a portrait that looks that good. So thanks. <laughs> so Thank really you. really good job on that. So um so I know uh this is going to be like a really awesome interview uh simply because we have uh what you know usually we talk before we kind of just wing it, but now we've got it all set up. We got seven. Uh, mistakes that musicians make when they promote themselves uh, online. So uh, let's just go ahead and start hitting it up. So what what is number one? Sure, sure. So um, I got my handy list here. Uh, so the, the first uh, you know mistake that musicians make um, is that they think that effective marketing is all about making announcements and then shouting to the world. Um, and I can understand where that you know like a lot of hey you know, come check out my track. Yeah. Hey come check yeah. out my track. And that's what it is. It, remember when uh, MySpace was all the rage and it sort of just to, it devolved, I guess, into this place where a bunch of musicians were just shouting at each other to, yeah, to check my stuff out. I don't even it's, go there, man. Yeah. I don't even go to MySpace. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's, it's, it's been history for a while, despite what Justin Timberlake tried to do with it. Um, but, uh, you know, so I've been at, you know, I've been at this marketing thing and, you know, researching, teaching, using it in my own life as a musician, as an author uh, for 20 to 25 years. And I know you too, it's probably, uh, I know you do a lot of online marketing yeah. stuff for musicians and other people. And so we have a familiarity with it but I can understand you know that's why there's always going to be I have a lot of job security because there's always going to be a new generation uh, it's 10 it's probably millions of creative people that are confused by marketing and so yeah. it's called self-promotion and the word self is in that term and so you think oh when I got to pr- promote myself I'm just shouting out you know letting people know about the cool stuff that I'm doing so it's not a, you know it's not a horrible evil thing that you're doing when you do that but if that's all that you do that is not what effective marketing is you i go to some bands like their facebook pages and it's just a bunch of gig announcements are the cds available here and that's just like one way announcement yeah. type communication and it's not very effective that's and so, not so using social media the, the way they need to be absolutely 
So, so you have to get out of that. Yeah, get out of that mindset. If it's just, I mean, you can you can throw those in as long as it's part of a bigger. You know, I guess there's actually uh, people. They I've heard different ratios and percentages, but um, generally speaking, you should do like seven or eight sort of informational or valuable type of links or just per, you know little peeks into your personality, uh, and then maybe two out of ten should be direct self promotion. Like, hey, the new album's available here. We're we're playing here. Yeah. So you have to mix things up but if it's all just announcements and you, you wonder well nobody's really responding well that's that's why yeah yeah, yeah it totally de- so, yeah it totally depends oh. on uh, engagement too you know if you have um you know guys if you have like a facebook fan page for your band which you you know should be at default uh if you if not a lot of people are commenting and engaging on your post and you're you know then you should back off of the self-promotion and do some more storytelling, you know, uh, of like you know, your band and like who you are and, and reaching out to people instead of just like, you know, here's the, here's the gig and here's the show. Here's the CD. Bye. Right. And actually the solution is kind of in my number two mistake. If you're ready to, for me to, to reveal that. Yeah. <laughs> so number two is, this is an interesting one. I, was like, I think it's a term that I, that I, coined but it says you don't realize the power of the fan engagement triangle mm, for you geometry students out there the fan <laughs> engagement triangle so let's just talk about that real quick so this announcement mentality that i started off talking about is one way communication and it's basically kind of like and i understand another reason why people are probably drawn to it is probably back in the major, the major label, well, it still is, whenever major label acts are promoted, it usually is that announcement type of thing, because yeah. they really can't, they have so many fans, they can't really engage one-on-one, so it's just, hey, on yeah. tour now. But they're not doing direct event. response marketing. for you know, Right, right. It's so this mass media sort of marketing. So, um, so announcement type marketing is one way. It's from artist or label to the fan. So you imagine an arrow pointing down, fans yeah. are down here, l- yeah. labels up here. I'll try to get my hands in the, <laughs> in the screen yeah. there. Um, now, uh, one step up from that is a two-way uh, type of engagement, and that happens, it's especially uh, valuable for indie artists who are still at a level where they can communicate one-on-one with fans. Of course, that happens at live shows. You need to go out and talk to people on breaks and yeah. before and after the uh, gig. But online, you want to have a two-way communication. So it's, it's artists posting something to the fan, the fan responding back. This can happen on social media through comments. It can happen by email. Um, uh, and I've text so maybe, maybe a little bit of text too, but social media, yeah, it's all over the, the comment, the liking, the sharing. But this is but this is a, a two way communication. So you got to step up. At least you're engaging with people. They feel like they're connecting with you. Yeah. Where the triangle comes in is when you also get fans communicating with each other. So you got to imagine this triangle here with the artist at the top. Mm-hmm. You're sending messages to your fans. They're not only communicating back to you, but they're interacting with each other. Yeah, and that they can do through comments, through sharing with their with their with their friends, and that's when you really are firing on all cylinders. When the stuff that you're posting uh, is not only get you to engage with your fans, but they're communicating. It's sort of like you know, like the Grateful Dead, you know, or whatever, like these bands like Fish and all that. That they have this core group of people that follow them and. A big part of the reason that you go to those shows is not only because you love the music and the artists, but it's because of the people you'll hang out with at those events. That's really a challenge to recreate in the online environment. So that as much as you can do to get that community and that fans communicating with each other, the more powerful you'll be. And I think as you were maybe alluding to, uh, uh, Kyle, and I'm sure that you know this, the more engagement you get like on a Facebook post or any Google Plus, wherever you are online, the more that's likely to show up in, p- in people's feeds. Yeah. And so you'll get a lot more visibility because people are interacting with it. The algorithms are saying, hey, this is something people are interested yeah. in, so they'll show it to more people, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and Facebook, I know lately uh, they made a change where uh, usually on the Facebook news feed, your newest post gets put, put at the top, but now it's the post with most interaction. So you can go onto your news feed and see a post that was, you know, could be hours old and but it's at the top because it has has the most engagement there and and that's just the thing with facebook yes it's you're not all of your fans are going to see all your posts on facebook that's why you have to really focus on um getting that engagement so bob what do you what do you think is the best way to get engagement to a post on facebook yeah it's a whole variety of things like in fact there's a new uh, a lot of people 
may know that one of the, I mean, I have several books and resources out, and the one that's probably I'm best known for is called the Guerrilla Music Marketing Handbook. And mm -hmm. in 2013, I put out a brand new version of it, you know, really re revised it and updated. And there's a whole new chapter there. It's called Everything. Oh, that's 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 the Encore A edition. Thank you for <laughs> getting that, Kyle. There's, there's there's three there's three books in the series, and that's that's one of the one of the three. But the handbook, which is a, like an oversized, a larger. Uh, uh, book. Um, there's a whole new chapter in there called Everything You Always Wanted to Know About What to Post and Share on Online. I really break it down in the different yeah. types of comp of uh, of, uh, of content that you can create. Um, and basically, yeah, some of, some of the top ones these days are uh, if you can ask questions. Yeah. Um, that's a really big one. That's a great way to engage people. Again, an announcement is just making a statement, but if you say, hey, we're trying to choose between these three designs for our next T-shirt or al next album cover, which yeah. one's your favorite? Uh, we're playing Saturday night at Joe's Bar and Grill. Help us design our set list. What songs would you like to hear? You know, we're, we're, or the second yeah, set's yeah. going to be fan appreciation, you know, all created by the fans. You know, yeah. what do you want to hear? Um, there's something along those lines where you're, where you're engaging and asking questions and ask for, you know, what do you think about this? You know, and it could be something about that you did or it could be something that's in the news that your fans would, or, you know, are, are interested in. And you post a link to some, some goofy thing that a celebrity did. And, you know, what do you think of this? Is this, you know, good role model, bad, you know, yeah. <laughs> bad, should bad I even role care? Model. You know, I'll tell you right now, bad role. Bad role. Yeah. Let's yeah. just go with, with, just go with, with, with that. It's more likely <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> And do you um, can you think of other ways to, to to get to encourage engagement from your experience? Um, uh, I think I think uh, the most powerful thing that it comes down to is is just telling your story as an artist, and that's giving um, not only like bringing things from pop culture or from the outside world to comment on, like you know celebrities or, or whatever you feel comfortable with, but also giving fans a peek in, inside your own world. You know, so mm -hmm. you have thing and it. It involves like a little bit of transparency. I know some art, artists are uncomfortable with that, but it doesn't mean you have to, you know, be like, here's, you know, here's the most like intimate secrets of my life. No, it could just be something as simple as you're moving to uh, another city. And so you, um, you're packing up boxes or you're packing up your guitar and you're like, you take a picture of that and you ask, oh, um, I'm moving out to this city. Uh, I'm, uh, does anybody know a great way I can pack this so it doesn't get broken? You know, and then it's, Right. Boom, boom, boom. You know, have people answering to that. You could even ask for a car advice. You know, your car breaks down. That's part of your story. And you're, you know, where, uh, what should I, how much should someone charge me to have this fix? You know, it's, uh, I think that's the the most powerful thing that artists can do on social media. But this is, I don't want to take uh, take away yeah. the spotlight from you. <laughs> right, right. No, I, I like this. I like conversations, and so yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, we all bring something to the uh, table. Um, you ready for number? Yeah, the mistake number let's three. Let's go. Okay, so you get. You get hung up on the technology and the delivery system instead of what's really running it all. This is, this is a, a thing that I've added to my – when I do my live workshops uh, on internet marketing, um, this is always something that I do kind of up, up, up front because there is a lot of focus on the site. What site should I be using? What's the new app, the, the oh, new yeah. gadget? Yeah. And it can be overwhelming, but it, it focuses you on the, on the, the mechanism instead of like how you're going to use it. But I, but I really like to remind people of what's really running it all and what is powering all of this online and digital stuff is people. And so while the technology might be new, I like to remind people that what's powering it is timeless. Because human beings are using the Internet to do what human beings have, been, have done for centuries, for generations. And there's a couple of things that I just like to point out, which to me, it just really makes it a lot easier okay. to, 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 to embrace it. So one is um, people like to express themselves. Uh, and this is again. A, not, this isn't an internet thing. This is something that you know, the caveman drawing. You know the walls in the caves. From the, the caveman era. Somewhere in Ref France, I remember studying that in college. <laughs> the cave. Drawing. Oh, is that is that where is that where one of the yeah, earliest the, cave the, drawings the earliest, are? Yeah, it was somewhere. It's some cave in France. Yeah, I remember that. So some guy named Og picked up a rock yeah. and scribbled it. You know, he wanted to express himself. Graffiti <laughs> is a. 
another example of that even writing on you know the bathroom walls i mean you know, just most of the craziest things that people do just so they could say hey i was here you know or uh, some other things that they say yeah, <laughs> yeah call <laughs> call so and so for something or other yeah. <laughs> so, um but so this is a human trait and so people get online and they want to express themselves which is which is wonderful because that's why people start blogs and they you know the ability to start podcasts you can be your own journalist now you know um even commenting on facebook you know i mean there's a lot of you know anybody who sp spends any time on facebook or has a lot of friends know they can get kind of political at times with people <laughs> expressing their views oh, yeah, and yeah. left and the right and who's yeah. right and wrong um and so and so realize this and you and and i used to always focus on the artist having the ability to express themselves which is which is true um but your fans also have the ability to express themselves. And so, again, yeah, give them the opportunity to spread your message yeah. to other people and encourage them to do that. And then create remarkable music that just blows them away that they feel compelled to do that without you asking them. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, it's, 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 so, so the timeless aspect of all this stuff is, yeah, people like to express themselves. And two, people uh, co naturally congregate with like-minded people. We are a tribal species, you know, and so again, this harkens back to the, whatever the, you know, the sitting around the campfire, yeah. the, the church group, the bowling league, the softball yeah. team, you know, the the corner bar, you know, the cheers, everybody knows your name, you know, that that yeah. type of thing, and so people are also clustering up online. Um, uh, but they're doing it in communities like Facebook groups and forums and, and Pinterest boards and, you know, and, and, yeah. and, all, and, all, and all this stuff. And so knowing that, if you know who your ideal fan is, you know, uh, the type of person they are, their gender, their age range, their mindset, their interests, you can go and seek out um, groups and, uh, that are clustering around these topics. Uh, and it's not always just specifically genre related or yeah, music related. Yeah. There could be other things related to your, like if you if you create music that calms people, yeah, where do people who are yeah. stressed out hang out? You know, yeah. where can you well, think reach about them? So, well, yeah. think about pop country. I mean, there's there's activities that are associated with a, a, the the typical fan. I mean, you can just listen to the lyrics and of any you know pop contemporary country song, and you, you can understand the demographic. So, I mean, that's that's. I would use that as <laughs> marketing research onto where I would look for, you know, people to connect with, you know, to based off of based off of those interests. Right. And you can go to an existing communities, you know, and there are tons of them out there, or you can, you know, eventually create your own, which I guess is the, because I think uh, that works on Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever. You can go and find out people that already have a tribe or leading a group, you know, and go, hey, I'm going to hang out here and be part of this community. And then at some point you might say, hey, I'm going to start my own. Then you're the leader of that tribe, yep. you know. And, start your uh, own subreddit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so that's, uh, so yeah, so that's number three. Anything else on that? Are you going to move on to four? Or is that, Let's is go cool? on to four. We're good. All right. The fourth mistake. Um, oh, you aren't using your artist website as the center of all of your activities. Oh, that's a good one. That's online. a good one, guys. So listen to this one. Continue. <laughs> cool. So I see you concur. All, oh, yeah. yeah already. Yeah, so a mistake um, mm -hmm. is using someone else's property. Like these days, it's probably the Facebook fan page. Yeah, uh, could be your Reverb Nation. I see a lot of artists pointing people to, yeah. um, and I guess that's better than nothing. Like I, I've also come to this realization that there are different levels of proficiency, and so like the lowest level is you're not doing anything. <laughs> you know, so oh, you yeah, have yeah, yeah. no website, no internet presence. Yeah. So it's better to use Facebook than not anything yeah. at 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 Which all. Which is the next level up? Is, yeah, I think is but, a Facebook fan page. <laughs> right, but but the, but the uh, the, the level above that is to have your own artist website. And that means you're you're paying for the hosting, yeah. um, and you control the mailing list, which I'm going to get to next. Mm -hmm. um, but I so I've done this series of workshops, and there's there's a YouTube video uh, uh, that, you, that you can search for. It's called Octopus Marketing Explained. <laughs> And so I do this, these workshops on, where I talk about octopus marketing. And it's basically, it's a great metaphor for the way that I look as a, for an internet marketing framework where the, if you look at the shape of an octopus, there's the head in the middle, tentacles reaching out in all directions. If you don't like that analogy, let's, you can compare it to a, a bicycle tire with the axle in the middle and spokes yeah. you know, reaching out to the rim. And so sitting at the center, that head or that axle, that hub, is your artist website that you control. You control the environment and all, all that stuff. And so Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, which is, should be a, a big part of your strategy too, YouTube, um, 
you know, Amazon, CD Baby, all these things are tentacles. iTunes, you know, anything place where your music is for, for, for sale. But think of them as tentacles, not the main property. And so you need to be posting on all these tentacles, but also regularly lead people back to yeah. your artist website where there's not all the distractions um, and all that good stuff. So what, yeah, why, why yeah. did that resonate so well with, with, with you, Kyle? Because no one does it. I mean, yeah. um, it's so essential, but no, no musicians do it. And if, if they do have their website, website then it's not optim optimized for uh, email capture, which I'm sure you're going to start talking about the email list. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. Cool. And that, and that is actually that is actually next. You aren't. Um, oh, wait. You, oh, you. Yeah. For number five is you don't realize um, the uh, hang on a second, my <laughs> computer just, just fell asleep. Uh, you don't realize the value yeah, of, of a fan email list. And even though, you know, I, I will admit that email is not as effective as it once was. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, open rates in just, just industry ride, uh, you know, are, are down. Um, people are overwhelmed by it, but it still continues nonetheless it continues to be the most effective way to directly reach people yeah. for now and probably yeah. for some some years to come and so you have to actively get that build that list yeah. um and again and a relationship with it right yeah and you because other, otherwise yeah if you're just relying on your facebook i mean everybody there's a lot of stuff in the in the in the tech world or the marketing world about facebook um yeah just being at people that even you might have ten thousand people that like your page but if you facebook know six goes percent of them, changes then you're done. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but not many people are seeing your actual posts unless you get that engagement that we talked about earlier. But, yeah. you know, you might, it, it even shows you 6% of your list, you know, saw this or no, they still 203 people or whatever yeah. of your 10,000 actually yeah. saw this, saw this post because they're doing that because they want you to, to boost it with a, yeah. with a, with the payment, which you can try. But uh, there's even things about that that are questionable. So, um, so you need to be, have a direct way to communicate with your fans. And so you need to actively build the list. And again, mm -hmm. hearkening back to what I just said about the proficiency, not having a list is the bottom rung. A step above that is having a little form for reverb nation or whatever you, you, you use that says, join the list, you know, with a, with a little oh, submit yeah. form, but that's not very effective. You're not going to no. get many people. So you really <laughs> have to bribe people these days mm -hmm. and actually I'm getting to the point where I'm telling people don't even talk about an email list. Talk about like your VIP club or your backstage pass or join yeah. the, the whatever band name community. Yeah. And you get all these goodies. There's a, yeah. you know five free downloads and discounts and meet and greets and yeah. you know and, all, and special video behind the scenes video. You know so you have you create this little like little club and you can do it in a way that it doesn't overwhelm you with creating content all the time. Make it easy on on yourself. Oh. But yeah. Pos but position. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can, yeah, you can do auto re responders, which is just a sequential follow-up series of emails for those of you who don't know. Um, but even if you're not using auto responders, just getting you need to get them on the list with this incentive to join your thing, and all they got to do is just enter their their name or or just their email address and hit submit to get all these free goodies. And then you can I, I recommend at least once a month. Just building the list is one thing, but you have to have to have to communicate with yeah. them. So at least once a month, maybe even you know twice a month, send something to them uh, with a new video, a new blog post, some new mm -hmm. sample or whatever that you you know stay in touch with them. But those engaging things that we talked about earlier. Yeah, yeah, but, I've, I've heard a lot, um, a lot of artists, uh, especially the one, you know the true do-it-yourself musicians that are successfully using uh, email marketing as you know a direct. Okay, I'm not gonna use all this like terminology but basically guys what i'm trying to say is that uh there are independent artists out there who are uh, making money by selling to their list because they build it and they build a relationship with that what do you think about right. um marketing directly and selling to your email list oh yeah no yeah i mean e email is the most powerful way to do that and one of my mantras for you know i've been at this for 20 years and even back in the uh, in the heyday of the of the major label era, uh, I was I was using this mantra of focus on fans. I didn't call it direct a fan, which is kind of a, a buzzword for the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, but I was saying the the, mo the your greatest asset is your fan base, and so focus on building them. Don't focus so much on impressing industry people early on. It's building the fan base because once you have a fan Can we base, add those that as a mistake. Sure, yeah, not focusing on your fans. Yeah, or, uh, yeah not focusing yeah. on your fans or trying to impress, impress industry people. That, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We think Absolutely. you have a good look. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, you don't want to hear that when you first or, walk in. 
<laughs> or I I don't hear a hit or something. Oh, that was yeah. that was that was a big one. Love the songs, love the band, but I don't hear a hit. Um, which you know, I mean, it's, I mean, it's cool to get feedback from professional oh, people, yeah. but ultimately you got to do your own. You know, got to do your own thing. But yeah, there's a lot of energy is is expended. And I can understand it back in the gatekeeper era where you needed a label or whatever to get your stuff out for yes. the most part. And they've always been kind of, you know, adventurous. Do you need a label nowadays? It's, oh, no. Hell, hell not, a, not at all. However, <laughs> hell well, no. <laughs> hell no. Uh, however, I, I, would, I have grown. I mean, I'm pretty fiercely independent. So I was, I, you know, there was a lot of, and I still am like, you know, don't mess with it. Because yeah. I think people use that as a kind of a, a scapegoat or whatever. Like, you know, I just need to, I need to be signed and somebody needs to save me when you really need to start your career on your own. But I think some um, just don't want to do the work or they don't want to, they don't want to change, you know, because they, they see themselves as an artist and marketing is this and that and sales is this and that. And I don't do that. And da, da, da. I need someone else to come along and solve my problem for me. Have you ever run into that type of mentality? Okay. Yeah. Have I ever? That's an understatement. It's <laughs> rampant. Yeah. I mean, it has been for it has been for for years. I'm struggling. It's just like the typical thing is I need a manager. And I go, well, why do you need a manager? Because I can't do this. Uh, I'm not getting anywhere on my own. Well, you're not going to interest a manager until there's something to manage. You won't get a label deal unless they want to. They they're almost using Low the risk. indie space yeah. as a farm team. You know, yeah. to to find out who the who the top players are to yeah. bring them up to the big game. You know, if you yeah. want to do a baseball analogy there, and so you have to uh, you have to get your career up and running before anyone wants to partner with you. But the cool thing about this era that we live in is that once you are up and running, yeah. and then somebody's interested in working with you, you have a choice. Do I really is this is this deal really going to be good for my career, or, or do I want to stay indie? Um, and and, and you and so there's pros and cons of going both ways, um, but uh, but yeah. So don't focus on the industry. Let's see where were we? Oh, so the fan e email list. Yeah, is the best way to build that relationship. In addition to the engagement that we mm -hmm. talked about, and then mistake number six on the big hit list here is uh, you. Um, oh, this is kind of a newer thing um, I threw in just because I'm I'm really focused on this as far as the online getting a getting attention and being noticed, you aren't using enough visual content online. This is one of the biggest uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, tr trends or things that people really need to be aware of, and I've been doing it. Uh, instead of just posting the typical text type of things, okay. like I used to do this, like when I had a new blog post or new video or, mm -hmm. some, or, or a new podcast, I would put the title and then a link to it. And I know sometimes Facebook, or Facebook will pull in a little, little thumbnail image of it but it's not as prominent as if you actually upload a photo yeah, yeah. so like so like if with a band instead of like announcing your um hey we're playing here on saturday night here's a link to the club or, or, or whatever create a little image you might yeah. even be the poster um people because visuals really get noticed yeah. uh get more engagement on facebook and with yeah. sites like instagram and pinterest now being very visually oriented yeah. Um, you cannot. You're going to increase your odds of being noticed and engaged with, if you have a visual to go along, yeah. with the simple text announcements yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think um, the the only platform you're sort of limited at is on on is Twitter, but people can see that image once they expand the conversation. So you Ooh. you know you would definitely want to uh, add images if you can. But Facebook is absolute must. I mean, just I I don't know if you do this, Bob, but what I usually do um, is I take uh, an an image to upload with the post and I edit, I have Photoshop and I know how to use Photoshop, but people, I mean, there's Microsoft paint and I'm sure there's something for, you know, free for Mac as well, Mac platform, but I would take an image and size it to four or three by four or three to optimize it for a newsfeed and then mm -hmm. uh, upload that with the post. And, and if I do share a link, uh, one thing I've been doing is, is a, is a link share. And I, the way it works is you, uh, share, you go to like, if you go to the post and it has like a Facebook share button, then you mm -hmm. can just click that share button or copy the URL, paste it into your Facebook post, and, and Facebook does pull that image, and then you can just delete the link, and it'll be just the oh. image there. So, uh, but what everything you're saying is told is super super important everywhere you do, but even more so on Facebook because you're really battling, you know, to get listed on that newsfeed and get attention. Right, and, and another one, another yeah, site that it wasn't on my list or whatever, but Google Plus is another one that people mm -hmm. really should at least have a, 
a presence on it. It's, it's also very visually oriented. Um, and there's advantages, even if you, you know, you're overwhelmed, oh, I don't have another social media site, but there are advantages, as you probably know, Google is tying in, um, it's changing, uh, SEO, search engine optimization is drastically changed. It's not just about keywords. It's, uh, uh, the search results that each person gets is much more localized and much more personalized than ever. Yeah. And so if you're on, and, they, and they're and they putting a lot more weight on your interactions and in, in your circle of friends on Google+. Yeah. And so it behooves you to uh, to be, have a presence there. Yeah. <laughs> link to your various sites from Google Plus and circle a lot of people, which is basically friending them in categories. Yeah. Um, and which then they that's don't also get to very, see. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but also, if you've ever noticed on, uh, I'm just going to check something here. If you ever noticed on, um, uh, uh, when you do a, a search in in Google, quite often some of the results have a little oh, photo yeah. Yeah. next to, next to them. A lot of people notice that. Um, and those tend to get seen and clicked on more so than um, than uh, than than the just the the, the basic search results. But that's part. Of, it's called Google authorship. I actually have a blog post on my site uh, at, at thebuzzfactor.com. If you search for uh, Google authorship for musicians, it'll kind of tell you okay. how that works and how to. But it, that's tied into Google Plus. Mm -hmm. So another reason to at least have. An account there and a photo and links to your various websites yeah. and then you know post every now and then there too um so how about i think we're down to oh yeah num i think we're to the last one are we number to seven. number seven yeah that was that was six and this is kind of a bigger philosophical thing um a, a mistake that musicians make is that they don't tap into the power uh or you don't tap into the power of your greater mission and I'm just gonna get a little bit, a little bit deep here. Hey, but, well, I you know, mean, we're all musicians. We're all yeah, us, some of us we're, supposed to be deep, but I mean, some we're creative, <laughs> yeah. feeling people. Yeah, you know, we're supposed to express emotion. <laughs> so yeah, what's I mean, what's the reason that you're doing all of this stuff? You know, is it just to get people to come out to a show Saturday night? Is it to sell a thousand, you know, two thousand CDs? Is it to is make it to a be, living? Is it to make an impact? You know. Yeah, and I, 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 I like to, I, I personally like it when um for me it works best when i realize the value that i'm bringing to people's lives and so again this is more of a touchy feely thing but i hope that you're you're tapped in to that anyone who has actually cranked out any original music or performed live or shared their music online has most likely encountered someone who said wow that song really touched me you, you made my this is the most fun i had all year or that they cried or they laughed or yeah. that you, you you they felt something as a result and they shared that with you and 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 spreading more of that feeling to people should be your mission. It's different for every artist. For some, it's the sad, you know, introspective songs. For uh, for others, it's whatever, making them aware of some issue or political protest songs or, or something. And for some people, it's, it doesn't have to be huge, you know, rid the world of hunger or whatever. It can be something like just party music. Simple pop party music has yeah. value too. People have had a long week at work and they just want to forget their troubles and dance. And, you know, that's yeah. a, so what is your overall, mi to me, the mission should really guide you. It should, should be your, the thing that pulls you like your compass and everything else is focused to support that, that mission but you have to yeah. figure out what it is yeah. like myself as an author i finally I've, I've honed this i've kind of had my little uh uh statements or mission statement and and it's evolved into it's into this is that i inspire and empower musicians writers and creative entrepreneurs to make a living and make a difference in the world okay. so that's my personal mission statement so it guides everything that i do okay. and then all the marketing stuff is then directed to support that mission yeah. but if you don't have the mission there to begin with to guide you you're kind of just flailing around doing yeah. different stuff and, you're, you know? yeah. and your motivation will suffer because it's hard it's it's really hard it's hard enough to to learn how to be to make great music i mean that's a craft in itself but it's even harder to to go beyond that and take control of your career and and learn the other skills that are going to be necessary if if you want to you know make a living off of that uh, or you want to make any money right. from it so it brings in another set of skills you can that you have to learn but um but yeah, having that why in mind is is the big essential. why yeah the big why and not everybody i mean and you don't have to either make a living for music or you don't have to reach a million people to 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 be satisfied and to have and to serve your 
serve your purpose with music. It's not everyone's not meant to, to be a superstar, yeah. and so you shouldn't try. And the worst thing, another mistake you can make is having mixed modes where you're mentally thinking, I want to be a rock star, but your daily actions are in hobby or amateur mode, and they're kind of out of alignment, so you're yeah. always frustrated, you know? Yeah. Um, and so sometimes you just have to say, you know what, I, 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 my family is most important. Music is a – and I actually just made that decision way back when where I realized, yeah, the, the rock star dreams. Um, I was actually more drawn to writing. I was publishing a local music newspaper. I was happy yeah. doing that. I didn't like traveling a whole lot. You know? Oh, so, really? And so I realized, you know what, I think this music thing will always be a, a part-time – passion and it has you know mm. decades later it continues i continue to play out live but i don't have so i don't have the, the mixed modes of oh i could have done more or, you know because yeah. i made I, i'm i'm satisfied with the choice that i made there yeah you know? and that's like a whole another basket of uh i don't know what i don't know what the the term is the word basket of apples I don't, it's a whole basket of eggs <laughs> what is it yeah this is a whole nother issue uh you know yeah. whole another thing a whole another conversation because I think it really comes, and I've been realizing this too, and this is, you know, kind of getting just more on the philosophical end, but, um, you know, what, what your purpose is, finding your purpose in life, finding like what you're really good at, what you're following your inclinations. And this was really sparked in me by a book I read by Robert Greene called Mastery, which is continues to be like one of my favorite books ever written. But, Ooh. you know, I've, I've kind of found that, um, the things that I want to accomplish in life almost extend beyond just the music itself. You know, it's like this idea of, of, uh, of, of travel, of, of experiencing, having new experiences of reality, um, you know, having impact on people in a, in a big way, whether it's many people or not so many people and, mm -hmm. and just having a life of adventure where you're constantly living at your edge and working to conquer fear on a daily basis. And so it wouldn't, you know, it's not necessarily whether as important, whether I was a musician or a painter or an engineer or whatever, you know, it's, th these are kind of like these timeless concepts that sit below the art, the crafts that we choose to express ourselves right. with, you know, so that in, in philosophical rant. <laughs> no, that's, that's <laughs> profound. Yeah. No, and it, so there's any, yeah. When you, when you're in touch with what that is, there's any number of ways you can express that and, and live it. It's not just, yeah. It's, I think a lot of people think their mission is I'm supposed to be a carpenter or something, you know, or, or yeah, uh, and, you know, and, a lawyer, but you, yeah. there's any number of ways to express whatever that value or that is yeah. that you have. Yeah. I, so I think, yeah, I think it's, I think it is important to, you'll gain, gain so much from, uh, Picking a, a, a from following your inclina inclinations to finding a line of work or a craft that you can de dedicate yourself until you master it, and then once you get to that level of of mastery, then you start to see life differently. Then because yeah. you've you've actually because it's not about like oh I become you know now I'm like really good at making cabinets. No, it's like now I see the secret of life because I've I've overcome all of my personal obstacles in order to get to that level. You know, so it's you true. have like a personal revelation. It's who um, you become on the journey, I guess. Yeah, right? it's it yeah. totally is. It's totally is about the the process of getting from here to there. Is that's where all the personal growth happens, and that's where you you tr you know start to find the happiness that you already had. And wow. I'm going off again. Uh, you are wise beyond to, your years. I how, get, old are, how old are you, Kyle? Twenty eight. Oh my God, that's that's very wise for for a man uh, in his twenties. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's thank cool. You. Thank you. <laughs> sure. So, uh, uh, you know, as you as you were saying that, it reminded me. Uh, I have this new interview series uh, called "The Creative Entrepreneur," and and oh, yeah. episode twenty was actually an interview with Derek Sivers, who a lot of people know founded CD Baby. He's actually been a friend for years, and he's uh, you know he hasn't owned it in like six years or, or something but he uh he talks a lot of this type of stuff in the interview yeah. that i did with uh with with him can i tell people where they can yeah, find absolutely, that absolutely and i also want to talk about what you're up to now yeah it kind of kind of ties i guess we're kind of segueing in to, to that but i have a separate site and uh it's my attempt actually to sort of widen the net you know now that i've been at this music specific thing for 20 years i'm i realized you know i do art i've done theater and stand-up comedy and you know all kinds of stuff um and so I, I realized that this this message appeals to creative people of all types. So I started this interview series called The Creative Entrepreneur, where I interview visual artists and writers and a actors and and all sorts of stuff and 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 music people too. But um, but there's a separate site called DIY Career Manifesto 
DIY, like do it yourself, mm-hmm. careermanifesto.com, all one one word. And it just so happens to be the name of a like a, a of a book that I've written is available in the Amazon okay. Kindle store. Okay. I eventually it's like fifteen thousand words now, so it's a kind of a small, you know, modestly a small book. Um, and eventually I'm gonna probably gonna double that word count and eventually you know have a have a print version. But I wanted to get this early part of it out there. And it's a lot of this this journey that we were talking about here about uh, my own a lot of personal stories about my own unconventional path to yeah. self-employment and how I debunked a lot of the traditional advice that you're given and then it was just not all about me I put it in terms of how the reader can you know can use can use it and apply it to their to their to their lives so that's kind of like the new project that I've got um, although I continue to be heavily involved in music marketing and yeah. the buzzfactor.com is the my main music website and then uh, for anyone interested in being a, a, a author, I also have fulltimeauthor.com. Where I, so I'm very, yeah, very busy. man. <laughs> I know, very busy online. I had the crazy notion earlier today, should I start one for visual artists? I went, no, <laughs> too much. There's someone out there who's like, oh, my oh, God, Bob. P- please oh, no. don't do that. <laughs> I know, it's, it's a little bit nuts. But it, but it is a rich, creative life. Uh, I mean, I have to admit, not all of them are, you know, earning money or whatever. I mean, earning a lot of money, the, the books, the music marketing books is my main bread and yeah. butter, but I, I delve in all those things, uh, because it's creatively satisfying and it also, you know, it but helps you people build the and, momentum on, on one thing before you move to the next, you know, I think, um, uh, that's important instead of just bouncing around trying to make a bunch of things work at once, you focus on one area. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing that I discuss actually in the DIY career manifesto, there is a, a group of people. I'm actually going to interview this gal who her whole message is you don't you don't have to choose one thing. You can do a variety of things. But I, I spent much of my 20s and 30s doing everything. I mean, I went nuts with creativity. I said I was in plays. I directed plays. I was playing in rock bands. I was publishing a local music newspaper, stand-up comedy, improv troupe type of stuff. I, mean, I was like creatively off the charts fulfilled. But I was spreading myself so thin that I wasn't yeah. – I was struggling yeah. financially. So at some point, I, real, the, I felt myself being more and more gravitated toward the books – uh, I was genuinely passionate about it, and I saw an opportunity to be able to to probably have a better chance of supporting myself. And so I dedicated my life really to that uh, me- building a whole uh, s- a set of resources on music marketing, books, audio programs, online yeah. courses. Now, uh, you know, live workshops, yeah. um, and that did you know actually ten years ago this month I I, uh, I worked my last day at a day job mm-hmm. um, for working for someone else. I and bet so that felt good. It it did it indeed. I, and I've been had been uh, self employed at different, various stages, but yeah, yeah. I, I've, but my last time I did I, I ever, ever plan on doing that yeah. <laughs> uh, was ten years ago. Uh, so for me, I had to choose something to focus on, and then once that was up and running. When I even, even I didn't have to wait till that was up and running. I still dabbled in these other things part time just to stay creatively satisfied. But I knew my money, you know, the, the the thing that supported myself and my family was from the music marketing stuff. Um, but uh, so yeah, yeah. So but it's different for everybody, and so I, I I enjoy talking to people who can do a variety of things and make it work too. You know? Yeah, yeah. But, I don't. I yeah. I've, I mean, for me, for me, the most important thing now has just been just been focusing because uh you know i like i said before we hit the record button it's it's, i mean i I haven't really picked up the guitar since like last august um i've been um you know so just very focused on season music and everything involved with that and i I think it's like is important to focus at least for me to focus uh for a a period of time straight to where you build up momentum you know so it's like right. maybe eventually I just have this initial hump to get over, and then once I get over that, I can automate some things, or I'm, I'm more accustomed to the workflow where I can get more done in less time, and then I can start. Oh, I'm like now I've got time freed up. I can prioritize it to to other things. But I've I've even experimented just with uh, you know having a goal of like once a day to. Um, do a little bit of writing for half an hour once a day. And once I do right. it, I forget about it. Uh, and, and I don't think about it for us a day while I'm focusing on the web show, because, uh, the worst thing for me is falling into that pit of thinking that I should be doing something else when I'm doing something else. Like if I'm like, if I'm doing uh, my social media marketing, I'm like, Oh man, I should be practicing guitar. Yeah. It's the worst <laughs> 
it's the worst feeling. And if you want to really stress out real bad and think like that. So, right. Yeah. That's just been kind of, kind of where I'm at. And so I'm, uh, uh hoping that in later, probably in a couple months, you know, later in this year that I'll, I'll put some, a uh, little bit more focus into that, but yeah, definitely don't spread yourself too thin guys, you know, and if you can get someone, you know, a family member to help you out with some of this stuff. <laughs> Maybe. Ab- ab- yeah. Absolutely. Good and good ad- advice. Well, this is, this has been, been fun. I know at the start we said, Oh, this might be about 20 minutes long and look at, Oh, uh, I knew it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, after talking to you for a couple minutes, I was like, I was not, no, this is going to be too good. Yeah. Too good. We're going to have to go all out. Well, I hope that we I hope we kept people's attention and gave them a lot of good advice. I appreciate you uh, inviting Absolutely. me to come on and share this message with your with your readers. I'll share it with mine as as well. See that triangle thing. You know, yeah, yeah. We'll have the, the, the triangular conversation there. <laughs> Engagement, yeah. Is it an isosceles triangle though? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good that's a good point. Uh, I, is I, that, I, I just randomly thought. I, of I'm not even sure what that that is that the even triangle size or is that even. the one where it's like that? I don't <laughs> Oh, isosceles, I think, is the one with the even sides, and the one that's not is, uh, I can't remember. Parallelogram. No, no, that's something else altogether. Yeah, no, yeah. Geometry. <laughs> yeah. That'll be the next, the next interview. We'll talk about, yeah. Oh, yeah, the next interview, mystic- I actually have a uh, you know, mathematician and uh, a geometry expert. <laughs> On the show. Biggest mathematical mistakes. We're going to do abstract, <laughs> ge- geometric abstractions of, of yeah. marketing uh, for music. <laughs> Sounds cool. All right. so, um, I have just one quick question uh, before you go. What is your favorite album, and what would life be like if it never existed? Oh, my God, my favorite album. Whoa. Um, man, oh, man. That's a good one because I'm thinking, geez, you're thinking like Beatles. Led Zeppelin was a was an early influence. And, you know, I grew up, I was in high school in the 70s. Um, an album, and oh. I don't want to be cliche and say Sergeant Pepper or Dark Side of the Moon or anything like that. I'm going to say Led Zeppelin Four. Okay. <laughs> I think I think that had a uh, yeah rock. It had uh, rock and roll and Stairway to Heaven, Black Dog, Misty Mountain Hop. I mean yeah, and, and I, I Jimmy Page was a huge idol. The first major concert I ever saw was the Led was Led Zeppelin in the, in the yes. 70s. And so it's yeah, very influential. So, yeah, I mean, the world would be a different place if there was no Stairway to Heaven. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there would have been no 80s hair metal as we know it if, yeah. there, wasn't a, if there wasn't a Zeppelin. Yeah. Period. And I didn't realize back in the day that that was basically was blues music rock, rocked up. I didn't, you know, I, I, I didn't have a, a history of, of music enough to know that I was just listening to blues. And then yeah. later I'm going, hey, that sounds like Zeppelin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or Muddy Waters or something, you know. Yeah. yeah. So. And even even listening to um, uh, a lot of Hendrix, like you can you can hear, I mean it's all it's all blues. But I I, I mean I like um, I I like it <laughs> I like it a lot. <laughs> I mean cool, I play, cool. I, I play uh, blues. I'm no by no by no means a blues uh, virtuoso on guitar at all. But um, yeah, definitely I hit my I still love Led Zeppelin like to to the core. Uh, but I I started listening to them in high school. In the two thousands, yeah. <laughs> a couple <laughs> decades 2000s. later, yeah, plus well, three yeah. decades later, yeah. yeah. So yeah, my well, brother got me into him. So it's great stuff. All Timeless. To the yep. <laughs> rock on. All right, rock on. All right, Bob, man. Thanks again for this enlightening interview and a little zep talk. Sure, my pleasure, Kyle. Thanks for having me. Okay. And that wraps up this week's episode of Seeds of Music. We had on the show with us Bob Baker from thebuzzfactor.com and many other places as well. So make sure to check out his links below and check out all that information on marketing if you are a do-yourself musician or do-yourself artist, which I'm sure you are. And there's one more thing that I wanted to mention besides this uh, in regards to promoting yourself online. There, uh, Just in case you were thinking this, I'm not saying you do think this way, but just in case, I just want you to know that that there is nothing wrong with promoting yourself online. It's not skeezy. It's not weird. It just totally depends, totally depends on how you go about it. So either you need to be promoting yourself or someone else needs to be promoting for you. 
either way, have them listen to this uh, this episode to see the music to help them give pointers unless they're uh, unless they're already a baller at it. So next, sign up for the email newsletter if you haven't yet. Go to seedsmusic.net, punch in your email address, and get our three free videos on the top mistake, top three mistakes that musicians make when marketing online. You'll also uh, be able to get all the latest updates on Seeds and Music. And you won't miss a beat. Uh, we also have a podcast over at iTunes, so you can head over there and search Seeds and Music Rise, Rise Above the Noise and subscribe to our podcast, get all the episodes, and make sure to leave a rating and a review while you're there. Also, if you like this interview, hit that share button below and uh, like it and share it with everyone you know through all your social media, Facebook, Twitter, and so on and so forth. We really appreciate that. And last, comment on the video. At the bottom, there's a comment box. Let us know what the greatest revelation was on this interview and how you apply these seven uh, these seven tips that you have learned in this episode. And next, who would you like to see interviewed? If that person is you, just reach out to me by email, kyle.seedsandmusic at gmail.com. I answer every single email because I'm just, that's just how I, this is how I roll. And remember, we are the future of music. Music.